Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show and welcome to the Culinary Hotline Blitz. I'm going to just do that again. Welcome to the Culinary Hotline Blitz. You know what? It's a very, very early <laughs> Tuesday morning, Wednesday morning. Clearly, I'm not awake either, but we're going to get straight into this because we've got so much excitement coming your way. Today's guest is no stranger to the TV screens. Chef Mo, renowned for creating bespoke culinary experiences for our international clients that highlight the vibrant flavors of South African cuisine, joins us today. So get ready to savor the essence of local and liquor as she shares three highly requested meals. And I think these are quintessentially South African. I mean, starting with a lamb curry, Chef Absolutely. Mo. Oh, the smells are already coming through with all the spices that we've got yes. going here. So this is a Cape Malay style um, curry, okay. and this is how I make it. This is the type of food that I grew up eating. Absolutely, you and me both. Right, so I wanted to share that um, with the international guests. You know, we get a lot of American tourists that come to visit Cape Town, and they're like, what is the local cuisine? And I'm like, I'm experienced. I'm going to oh, show you. I'm going to share this. I'm sure your mom is so proud of you as well and your Oma, <laughs> like, yes, come through with the flavors and spices. So what oh, do we I actually hope. have got going here? I wonder if I could guess. Probably not. Yes. Can you guess? No. <laughs> okay. So that is Something your curry. your curry powder. Yes. I, I like to use a roasted masala. Mm. So in here we've got a chopped onion and then you want to toast your spices. So we're going in with your roasted masala or your curry powder. Yeah. Did you guess what that one was? I didn't. It's coriander. Okay. Ground coriander. I'm not Dania in its true form, you know what I mean? Not this form. This one? Oh, I know this. You know it. Cumin. Yes. yes. Okay, I'm proud. I'm okay, proud we get it somewhere. And yes. Wow, I don't know. I okay, know, but so I don't. That one is a bit difficult. This is garam masala. Okay. Yeah. So, so we want to toast our spices first to what? Yes. Bring out the flavor more? Yes. And mm. because, you know, so it doesn't create, like sometimes you get those curries got like a mealy consistency. Mm. So you just want to cook it out a bit, get that floury bits out. Okay. And then, so a bit of curry leaves yeah. and your cinnamon stick. Okay, as opposed to powdered cinnamon. Yes. Well, you can do either ground cinnamon, but you just need that little hint. Oh. Yes, because I'm a spice queen, you know. I yeah, like she is. My... <laughs> now, this is going to be easier for me to guess, but how long yes. does that go for before So, this is in? actually ready, and mm. next we can go this in with... This is the ginger. Yes. So, what garlic, you can do as well is to marinate your lamb with the spices, bit of garlic, bit of ginger. Mm. Let that sit for a bit. Some people use a bit of yogurt as well, oh, just nice. to get it nice and tender. Mm. Um, but sometimes when I'm in a hurry, this is just, I just weigh everything together yeah. in one pot. You and say then, in a hurry, but doesn't lamb take a little while to cook? It does. So usually when I'm running a little bit late for mm. my dinners, um, because, you know, traffic in Cape Town course, is a we thing. know the deal. <laughs> mm. um, I would get the lamb started and then let that just simmer away slowly while mm. I get on to the rest of it's usually like a three-course dinner. Of course. So. And lamb takes about how long? Uh, depending on if you're using, like this one is mm. without the bone. Okay. So um, it's like a, you know, the leg of lamb mm. that you just chop off the bits of meat. Right. And then let that go. So that would take about maybe 45 to one hour. Not bad. So and not as long as beef. That would take like three hours, yeah. two hours. So, and if you've got this, the bone in mm. stew pieces, that would go like maybe an hour and a half. Right. So we can go in with the lamb. Amazing. Because we want to get all of those some, those flavors to get to know each other. Yes. Oh and my goodness, it's already smelling like a yes. proper, proper curry. How do you know when the flavors are ready for the meat to come in? Um, once your, your spices are nice and toasted, mm. that's when you, and you can smell it. Okay. Then you know you need to go in with the meat. Yeah. Be going in with a bit of ginger. I love ginger. Yes, it really does bring out those flavors. Yeah. The other day I did a lamb curry and I forgot the ginger and I was like, you know what? <laughs> you Throw the whole just, meal away. <laughs> you just kind of got to go with it. It really does add yeah. to the flavor. And then I like to add a bit of tomato. Okay. And um, you've got tomato in many forms, yeah? Yes. I love using tomato because I just think that it, it just adds that that extra bit of zinginess mm. and the, that acidity of the tomato. So fresh tomato stuff. and tomato paste. And a bit of tomato paste or puree, okay. whichever you have. 
it just really adds the whole overall flavor and the gravy of the curry. Right. Because you want a saucy curry. You do. No one likes a dry curry. No. Because the rice needs to be, you know, soaked in it or exactly. the rooty um, or roti, however you want to say it. Or the naan bread. Or the naan go, bread. <gasps> you know? Delicious. Stop it. Stop <laughs> it. It's too early for my mouth to be watering like this. Okay. We also have some beef stock and some, some chili. Stock. Yes. Now, how do you measure your chili? Like, some people can't deal with too much on the Scoville scale. Yes. Some people, they do struggle mm -hmm. um, with the chili, but for me, I'm always like, I always gauge with people. Okay. And I'm like, how do you like your food? Spicy mm -hmm. or, because, you know, I'm a spicy. I'm a spicy girl. Do you like things <laughs> hot? Or? You know what? Um, just a, like a bite. But not that my whole face like explodes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Don't let the hair for you. Like <laughs> not at all. Okay. Okay. So that's so just a little bit of chili. A little bit of chili. Sometimes you can go with the green chili. It's not too hot. Okay. But I like a little kick. Mm. Not too much of a kick. Yes. So I'm I'm with you on that. Uh, so you beef go, or chicken stock? You can do whichever you have. Actually, I prefer a beef stock. If you can get lamb stock, you can go with that. Um, I didn't even so, know that was a thing. Yeah, you get different types. You can even make your own. Mm. Like if you're using um, the stew pieces with the bone in, yeah. you actually just need water because <gasps> that the bones actually create like a stock wow. in the curry. Wow. I've heard so much about the goodness, the collagen that comes from yes. bones and the marrow that you can eat as well. Exactly. Delicious. It's okay. Great for our so skin. the stock also helps with the gravy, like it thickens it up, it, it does. adds some sauce. And another uh, natural thickener is the potatoes. Oh, we know, the potatoes go in like last, hey? They do, um, but for the purposes of, of course, TV, yeah. we are going in and because this is actually not going to cook that long, yeah. so it's going to thicken up very nicely. It's going to simmer low and slow because you don't want your lamb boiling like okay. it gets up to temperature right okay. now as it is and then you just put it low and slow let nice. that go and just a little bit of bubbles mm. on top and you're good to go. Okay, 45 minutes later to maybe an hour, yes. you have a delicious meal. Now, I love that it's served with a bit of a sambal as well. I feel like that freshness really does add to it. I also love like a um, onion salad or like a dania salad on the mm -hmm. side. I think that zinginess with the vinegar really adds to it. And the vinegar, ugh, the vinegar, the, the yellow rice is a classic South African it's so staple. iconic. Raisins, right? no raisins. Well, I like a little bit of raisins. Okay. How do you like it? You know, I don't mind raisin and rice. And you that's don't. where, that, that's where, because they tried to make me eat baboti last week and I said, are there raisins in here? Yes or no? So oh. I only like my raisins in rice. That's kind of where it is. Okay. Well, that's how you make your Chef Mo lamb curry. Of course, this recipe is available on expressoshow.com and we hope this Sunday you'll include this delicious South African classic to your repertoire. Thank you, Chef Mo. Thank you. It's my feel good breakfast show. Hello and welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show Express. So right here on S3, we are heating things up in the kitchen right now with another edition of the Culinary Hotline playing Ting Ting Ting. I was the only one doing that, but it's fine. We're not going to do another round. Chef Mo, thank you very much for joining in. Thank you. Very nice and softly on this side. But um, <laughs> yes, today is the guest. She is no stranger to our TV screens. It is Chef Mo, renowned for creating bespoke culinary experiences for her international clients that highlight the vibrant flavors of South African cuisine but now she's impressing us today here in studio and she's back right now to show us how to make delicious pulled oxtail croquettes. I mean, just saying it, it sounds delicious. But remember, this is the, colon, the, this is the culinary hotline bling. So if you have any culinary questions or conundrums, you can join in on the discussion. You can send your voice notes to us on WhatsApp 063-408-8863. Chef Mo. Yes. Hi. Hi there. So there's some stuff that started sizzling there yes. while I was talking and that, that got me quite distracted. But here we are. There we are. So we start off by making the oxtail, cooking it, getting it so nice and tender that you are able to shred it. So now, now everyone, how do you do that? Everyone has their recipe. Yes. So this is just the uh, normal, simple recipe. You don't need to go very crazy with it. Yeah. So you've got your onions going over there. That's um, it. Do you want to use the spoon? I can for actually. That? It'll be better. And then you're going to go in with some carrot. Here we've got some tomato paste just to add. I love using tomato paste and puree and tomato in my food. All right. Because it just gives that intensity of the flavor. You're going to go with some bay leaves. When you're doing your onions and your carrots, I always add a bit of uh, bay leaves just to give that bit of savouriness. Okay. And then um, you can also fry the tomato so that it's not so acidic 
Right. So you get it going with the onions. With the onions already. There we go. And nice then thing. we've got some garlic as well and a bit of mixed herbs. I love using fresh natural flavors. Yeah. So lots of herbs in the food, lots of natural spices, that type of thing. And then you're going to go in with your oxtail. Okay, so, so the oxtail, just quickly talk me through, what have you done with it up until this point? So we've just cooked it slightly, um, and now we're going to finish it off in that sort of like a mirepoix. Okay. Is what we call that mixture over there. Okay, right so you're right. going to add in your rosemary. And How much of this do you want? Um, you can actually go in with all of that. Yeah? yeah? Do you normally take it off from the stem or do you actually just throw the whole thing in there like this? I would go in because it's not going to end up in the end product. Okay, so, so let's go with all of it for flavor. All of it for flavor. And Look at you, know, that. you can add some stock to that, but we've got some stock in here. Yeah. That's your oxtail. So this all goes in here? In there. My goodness. Okay. And some people like to add a little red wine to it as well. So, yes. you know, anything goes. So that cooks down, and then once that is nice and tender, you're going to take the meat off the bone, yes. shred it, until you get to this point. This so you down. put it in a like a baking tray type of thing, and then you reserve the liquid, the cooking liquid. Okay, that so got. you take it out, and then the liquid that you got there, you keep that. Yes, because now it's right cooked out. down, and it gets to this point. Now you're going to make a roux. So you're going to... <laughs> <laughs> I can see that Chef Mo's like, listen, there's a lot that we need to do here. There's a lot. This is a labor of love. But yeah, for people sure. people love it so much. And because, you know, us South Africans, we love our oxtail, especially cold, rainy day. Oxtail is the perfect thing. So I thought, how do I elevate it? Let's make croquettes. The croquettes. So um, right. you're going to melt the butter in okay. your pan over there. And this is for this is where I'm using this that's guy. Where you, that's where the whisk comes in. That's it. So that's nice and hot already. If you would like you to get your hands on the recipe for our little pulled oxtail croquettes, you can just log on to the website, expressoshow.com. And remember, uh, Chef Mo's here for you. If you have any questions specifically maybe about how to make oxtail, if you have a conundrum in your own kitchen, please send your voice note 0634088863. And uh, she's here on stage by to answer all of your questions. Okay, so okay. butter is melting. Butter Does it need melting. to be melted down completely? Uh, not really, so you can go in with your flour. Okay, so okay. this we just kind of like now and work in there. That's gonna thicken it a little bit. All right. You've made a roux before, right? Um, yes, but it's been a while, so you're gonna talk me through it. Okay, so yes, you get to that stage, and now you're going to add, instead of like you usually add like milk or yes. cream, oh, so you're going you to add, add your stock. stock. Yes, right. that your cooking liquid. Okay. So that goes you're gonna in go for it? a little bit. Okay, so you don't want to go in, you want to go Not little by much. little. Yeah. And then that thickens. Let's, how is it looking now? Yes, you see how immediately yes. that thickens. And look so at that. Oh. at that stage, now Beautiful. you bring it into here. And that is going to sort of bind I see. all of this. So can I bring it? So you can bring that over. Okay, and I mean, look how beautiful that is. There we go, that's enough. And then mix that through. So then once you have got it all combined and mixed together, you're going to let it sit in the fridge. Right. For a little bit so that it can really... Really just, just bind together because obviously we are making croquettes. You want to make sure that it stays in the shape. That's exactly that you do. it. Okay. Okay, so... Oh, that smells. Delicious, all those flavors coming up. Yes. Just quickly talk to me while we are making it here. How much liquid should you have in the pot when you do it with your mirepoix that you said and once you've put in the meat as well? You need about two cups of two cooking liquid. Okay. So depending on how much oxtail you have cooked, yeah. you need about two cups um, so that everything can cook and then also to have some reserved liquid. Right, and you, and you obviously cover it and let it just on yes. a slow, low and slow. Low and slow. With any tough cut of meat, you want to go really low and slow. Righto, got it. So it takes hours, but you know, later. But it's life. worth it. <laughs> it's worth it. Okay, so here you take a little bit. So I've got some flour, I've got some beaten egg, and I've got the breadcrumbs. Right. So you like to you want to season your flour and your breadcrumbs. We've got some garlic powder, a little bit of mixed herbs and just get that all, because everything is about flavor. You yes. really want to build up on those flavors. 
Exactly, because once you take a bite into one of these croquettes, I mean, you want to have that almost like a that explosion of exactly. flavor in your mouth with a softness of the meat as well, because you've done it perfectly. That's yes. why. Right, now this part is a bit messy. So once it's all set, yeah. you just take a little bit into your okay. hand. Get but it obviously it'll be better when it's cold, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Easier to handle. So I've got a little bowl of water here that also helps. You go in into the flour. Right. Dip, dip, dip. As you notice, I didn't use much flour in here because yeah, obviously exactly. that also thickens once it stands. It starts to thicken up as well. So right. into the flour, coat, and then into the egg. So you got to use one dry hand, one wet hand. Right. Yes. And then into and your then crumbs. Into your crumbs. Coat that up. Is our oil nice Listen, and warm? Can we just acknowledge the fact that she makes it look so easy, <laughs> Chef Mo? I mean, come on now. You know, I bet you if I even had a go at this, it would not come out <laughs> like that at all. I would be messy all over the place. And there you have your little croquette, and then that goes into the In oil. Okay, so into the oil here. So yes. this has been heating up. How do we check that the oil is the correct temperature for this? You can actually use a wooden spoon and if you see little bubbles forming around the sides then you know your oil is ready so like, like that. that yes you can also use a bit of kind of it can probably go just a little bit more yeah because you also don't want it too hot yeah otherwise you're just going to get a burnt croquette right. and that's not going to look see. cute on your okay plate i tell you what <laughs> we are gonna um let this heat for a little bit yes and then uh, we'll come back and uh, we'll show you how it's done but for now that is what it would look like if we have a final product like that because i cannot wait to get a taste of that thank you very much chef mo appreciate thank that so if you want to get your hands on the recipe once again it's on our website expressoshow.com for our pulled oxtail croquettes it's decadent it's delicious and it's bursting with flavor stick around for our next culinary hotline adventure heading your way soon soon it's my feel good breakfast show Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. Thank you for being here. We've eaten good stuff, but of course we've got to end off with something sweet. And as we wrap up today's culinary hotline, we are in for a delightful treat with Chef Mo. Yes, yeah, she's still in the building. Now she's going to show us how to make a peppermint crisp cup that are so easy to prepare. And also, most importantly, I just know for a fact that they are delicious because anytime you have something tart, something peppermint crisp coming together, it's going to be a good time, Chef Mo. It is. And this dessert is so South African. Yes. so iconic mm -hmm. it's our favorite so and also I must confess tell me baking is mm. not my forte oh so you and me both <laughs> I always look for the easy way out when it comes to desserts and I keep it simple mm -hmm. yet I still you know want to rip our country right and our favorite things mm -hmm. and this is one of them so um, have you made this tart before? I have not. I'm also not a pro at baking, so I try <laughs> not to touch anything. I buy them or I ask yes. my aunts to make them for me. Yeah. yeah. So where do we start? So it usually starts with a biscuit base. So you okay, use yes, your course. favorite yeah. biscuit and you add some melted butter awesome. to the crumbs. So you got to like, oh, like if you're having a long and a bad day, you take those biscuits yeah. and a a rolling pin and you just you just go for you it go or for you it. imagine it's somebody's face that you really don't like and then you i just, mean if you're okay. choosing violence, violence that sorry. day <laughs> sorry i apologize to the nation <laughs> okay and then you're going to get it into that sort of consistency yeah. you can use a muffin tin mm -hmm. what i like about this is that you get individual desserts yes. so that no you, one's fighting over the whole yes because it will be a fight you know what yeah, i mean there might be it when might it comes to dessert like, of course it will be a thing of like if you make one one big one it's like why is my slice smaller than exactly so and so especially peppermint crisp tart yeah. i mean oh, that already smells amazing so you're going to press that mixture into here and you bring it up alongside the walls of the muffin tin okay and you're going to put that in the fridge so that it sits and then you can it's easily to to take that out and then your mixture is very super simple. Mm -hmm. You're going to go with some um, caramel and a bit of whipped cream. So I'm here. going to just get the cream going. You don't want to go. Oh, there we go. <laughs> you don't want to go too um, crazy with the cream. Okay. Just like, you know, when it's like nice, soft and fluffy. Yes. Because, yeah. And then I'm just going to try to get another spoon or I'll use that use spoon. And then I'm going to, you need to soften your caramel. Okay. 
So just get it to a nice consistency once it comes out of the tin. Mm -hmm. You can also make caramel from scratch. How do you make caramel? With condensed milk. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so you, you go, put that you. in a in a, a pot of boiling water Wait, and so let that's it just go. condensed milk? It's essentially, yes. Condensed milk. I was today years old when I found that out. <laughs> okay, are you set there? I think so. I, which one? This one? This uh, one. That one. This one. Yeah. So then that just goes and then that's also we get that into the you know what yes go ahead we'll go we'll go this route <laughs> <laughs> then you take your peppermint chocolate mm -hmm. i'm gonna rinse my hands again. you just crush that nicely and then you want to get some of those bits in there as well and you want to save some of that peppermint chocolate for your topping okay so you crush this how also just using the back of something or just something like yeah. a, the end of something a rolling pin just going in yes okay cool and then you choose violence yes <laughs> in that moment only in that moment though yes. any other moment we choose peace okay so at feel good breakfast show for a reason at all times okay so yeah you see it gets a bit lighter mm -hmm. so we can actually add in a little bit more cream okay cool Let's go with some more of that. So what color are we looking for? Let's go this way. Like you just want it because caramel can be quite sweet. Yes. So uh, the cream sort of tones it down mm -hmm. a little bit. And you can add a little bit of those uh, that Would you say crushed. like half? Yeah. Okay. Let's go with half. And then you just pop this mixture into your biscuit bases. So you don't bake these first so that they, you know? No, because it's already, the biscuit that you use is already baked. Right. So this is a bake-free dessert. I see what you mean when you said easy. You know. This is a couple of steps <laughs> and then we have something incredible. Yes, and then I'm going to give you the honors. Oh, wow. Just okay, all of that. And like, how much do we go in with? As much as you want. They don't rise, so whatever we put in is what we will have, right? Exactly. Okay. So that's going to sit in the fridge. Um, you can actually, you, when you're having a dinner party mm -hmm. or whichever occasion, mm -hmm. make this ahead of time, let it sit in the fridge by the time it comes to dessert. Nice. It sits, it's ready. No stress, you get to sit down. And enjoy. And enjoy. Now, me personally, I'm not waiting for a dinner party to have this, to be honest. Like, <laughs> I'm just going to do this on a casual Tuesday afternoon and make sure that my day and week is sorted. Okay, do okay. we top it now with the rest of the chocolate? You or? can, actually, okay. because that also helps to absorb some more of that peppermint. Oh, wow. There's something about caramel and peppermint chocolate. Absolutely. And those flavors just all come together. They just speak to one another. I don't yes. know if any other country would agree but honestly South Africans have done the things when it comes to making peppermint something delicious yes. right and you know tourists tell me all the time the food that they experience here yeah. in South Africa they're like their minds are blown oh yeah we have such good amazing cuisine and variety and too. variety yeah you know like you know, when you come to South Africa you're not necessarily going to ask for you know French mm. or Italian they want to experience our flavors yeah. our heritage yes and that's the the type of thing that I sort of beautiful well let's try one and then also i'm going to put this question to you it's really tough but what is your favorite south african either dessert or meal not to make to enjoy to enjoy um i must say my mom makes a really good chicken biryani or chicken Ooh. acne <gasps> delicious does she make it for us not really so i'm just you know putting this out to my mom <laughs> Just saying, just saying. Not you throwing shade at your mother right now on national TV. <laughs> and um, my favorite dessert, oh gosh, um, iconic malfa pudding. Of course. With custard? With custard. Cold or warm? I would do custard and ice cream. <gasps> because why not? Why not? Yes. I absolutely love your thinking, Chef Mo. Let's try this out. I'm yep. just going to use, I don't know what this is, but I'm going to use it. Spatula. <laughs> the spatula is going to help us yeah. put this in half. Well, you can find this recipe on expressoshow.com and I know for sure it's going to be a crowd favorite. Look at that. Absolutely delicious. Mmm. Familiar, nostalgic, but elevated. Quick and easy to make. Mm -hmm. And look how perfectly it all came together. It's wow. set. It's done. Now you get to sit down and have a fat conversation. Chef Mo, can I take you home with me, please? <laughs> of course. Deliciousness. Please make this at your next gathering of your good friends. I'm going to have another bite.